Hey guys, I'm Lucky Moo back here for the video guys. Today we're gonna to be taking a look at the Sony A7 III and how good honestly is it? Let's get right into it. Alright guys, so as I said before, yes, we are taking a look at the Sony A7 III. And if you guys know anything about me, you know I shoot strictly Canon. I have a Canon lens I'm going ahead and shooting on right now. I have another uh, Canon camera which is a rebel sl2 and i also have a g7x mark ii all canon so yes it did kind of suck when i went ahead and went out and bought a two thousand dollar camera but with that in mind the reason why i did it was because i do love sony too sony has an amazing set of lenses and i definitely wanted to go ahead and get those a try and see how i like them compared to you know canon so with that in mind what we're talking about today is not canon in any context we are talking about this bad boy right here which again as i said is the a7 III which is just a beautiful camera altogether now a good thing i do like about this camera and i'm just going to start listing some facts about it starting off right away it is a 24 megapixel full frame camera I did mention the SL2 and I mentioned the G7X. Think about those two cameras, they're not full frame, they're crop sensor. So pretty much what that means is that whatever lens you get, a 16 to 30 or a 10 to 18, you have to take 10 times 1.6 to get 16 and that is what you're seeing on a crop lens sensor. Overall, you can take amazing photos on a crop lens sensor. Honestly, it does not come down to the camera, it comes down to the photographer. But what, it, what what's really important is just that full frame gives you the ability to do anything. Because not only are you able to go ahead and capture more light, you're capturing the more of the picture rather than just capturing kind of like a cropped, cropped image of the whole entire image. So that is one thing that's awesome. Again, 24 megapixel camera, uh, the A7 R2, uh, S2, was actually only 12 so this is actually an upgrade from that of course it's also an upgrade from the a7x2 um a7 2 so it is an upgrade from that nonetheless though we also have 93 percent autofocus coverage which is also very nice the autofocus on this camera based on my experience is that it's amazing when you're using sony native lenses now, of course, you can go ahead and add a different uh, adapters to this camera. You can use the Metabones, you can use the Sigma, you can use a kind of cheap uh, off-brand that I used that was like 100 bucks. But you're not going to get the full autofocus that you want to get from this camera. And that's amazing about this camera, unless you use Sony native lenses. You can kind of get away with it if you use some Sigma lenses or if you use some other knockoff, not knockoff brands, but not other brands on Sony. But you're not going to get the full experience that you will be getting with a native lens. Nonetheless, though, um, if you do go ahead and invest in a Sony lens, it is very, very expensive. Unlike Canon, and I'm not saying Canon's cheap in any circumstance, but you can get a lot of good budget lenses by Canon rather than not getting them by Sony. Sony, the good lenses cost you a pretty penny. And like for example, I am shooting this on a uh, Canon 50mm 1.4. It's around $400 lens, around $300 if you get it on sale. It's always on sale. I could shoot the same exact you know video on a f1.8 by Canon and it's gonna look not as great but still very amazing. If I try to shoot that same exact thing on a Sony, I'm not gonna, the Sony 50 millimeter 1.8, 100 and around $300, 250, you could probably get it for cheaper. I'm not gonna get a good, a good video from that because the manual focus, you have to manual focus on a lot of cheaper end Sony lenses rather than a Canon that even though this is a, a lot less, I'm able to go ahead and utilize it a lot more. So that's something that I really do like about Sony or Canon versus Sony is that again, Sony just, if you want to get good, you got to get good lenses. Now, if you do shoot manual, which again, shooting manual is not that difficult. I know a lot of people, some people hate it. Some people love it. Some people are like, I only shoot manual and I only do my videos in manual. I personally, my personal opinion is I have no issue with manual. I mean, 
um I, autofocus is great and if you are getting this camera and you know i believe it's 619 different focal points when using this so that is very very awesome uh so 693 for phase detection points my bad uh when using this camera now again if you use sony lenses you use other brands if you use an adapter or a Canon lens, you're gonna have a little bit of issues. But that's why, again, this autofocus on this camera is phenomenal. It's amazing. So if you're getting this, again, I recommend investing in a good lens. Now this le camera is 1700, but you can get this lens right here with it for around 1999. Obviously with tax, it comes like $2,100. But without tax, if you buy it in like Delaware or places that have sales tax, you can go ahead and get it for exactly $1,999. Um, this lens though, this is a kit lens, is a 20, I think it's a 24 to 70 millimeter, which is not bad at all. 28 to 70 millimeter, which is not bad at all. And if you buy it with the body, you get it for cheaper than buying it alone. Buying it alone, it's $400. Buying with the body, it's like 200 So I recommend always, if you are buying this camera, get the lens with it. It's not a bad lens. It's um, f3.5 to 5.6, so it's good f-stop. It's overall... It's a manual focus lens, so it's not an autofocus lens. It's something you're gonna have to really get adjusted to right away. But overall, it's a very good starter lens, especially for Sony. And again, with that price tag being like only two, three hundred dollars, you might think it's bad. It's really not. It's actually pretty good. Now, let me go ahead and talk about one thing I hate about this camera because I've been talking about everything that's good, and I feel like I'm just ranting about how great this camera is because it is a great camera. It is great, but right now. I'm recording this on a Canon uh, 60 Mark II. And I can see myself. I can look at myself. I look beautiful. Look at me. Look. Hang on. Look at those angles, right? I can see that. But if I was recording this on this Sony A7 III that cost $2,000, I cannot have that same luxury. You're going to have to buy a monitor if you want to record videos with this, with the setup I have right now. Because guess what? You can't flip, the, the, the screen doesn't work. It, it, you can't flip it 180. You can't flip it like this. You can't see yourself. So if you are recording yourself like this, yeah, you're gonna have to go ahead and get a monitor because you're not gonna be able to see yourself through the camera from just looking at it. So that sucks. You know, it's a downside. Is that a game changer? No. If you're, use, if you're buying this strictly to vlog with it, don't buy it to vlog with it. <laughs> if you want to buy a good camera to vlog with it, buy the Rebel SL2. It's around $400. You get a good kit lens with it. It's a great camera. That's what I recommend buying if you're buying a, that. Or you can get a G7X Mark II because the Mark III just came out. Yeah, never mind. Get the SL2. <laughs> G7X Mark III. Uh, it's not a bad camera. It just doesn't have a... It has a headphone jack, but it doesn't have a... A microphone mount anyway I, I digress though don't buy this to vlog with it if you're buying this to take photography or you're taking videos definitely a great camera now what this does go ahead and include in this camera is 1080p at 120 uh, FPS it also does 4k at 30 FPS or of course 1080p at 60 FPS very nice right out of the box you're getting a great camera with a great ability to shoot video again if you are doing this for photos it is also a very great as i already talked about that the um it has 693 phase detection points uh it also has 24 megapixel overall again if you are investing in this i do recommend investing into something very you know say very expensive a very good lens because again it's a very good camera, and if you put a cheapo lens on a really good camera, you're gonna get a cheapo, you know, product. That's just how it works. So with that in mind, another great thing about this, and I love it so much, is it is touchscreen. So the LCD screen right here is touchscreen, uh, just like any kind of a lot of Sony. So I like Canon uh, cameras. It is a touchscreen camera. Another thing I do love about this real fast, it's gonna go ahead and be. There's a lot of cameras actually have this. The 6D Mark II does not, and I know a lot of. Uh, lower end cameras do not have this but a lot of higher end does and that's going to be dual um what's it called it's gonna be dual sd card slots which of course that means if you are going ahead and uh you know you run out of space you're able to go ahead and just utilize that uh the dual card slots 
very easily. And I do love that. I think it's a very good feature and it definitely helps out a lot when you are taking a lot of pictures, a lot of videos, stuff like that. Now, real fast, an add-on for this camera right here, you can go to Best Buy and spend $394 for a battery pack. You can do the same thing with a Canon. Amazon sells a lot of good battery packs for a lot of good prices. For example, the battery pack on Amazon is 70 bucks for this camera. I'm rocking with a $94 one on my Canon 6D Mark II, and I know you can buy one for Best Buy for like $600 or $200. Don't ever do that. Save the money. It, these battery packs usually, most part, look at reviews. Look at reviews. Let me say that real fast because yes, I don't want to, you get a battery pack and it destroys your camera, but look at reviews, but most part, a lot of them are really good actually. But with that in mind, this also does have something that I really love so much. And I was actually so upset that the 6D Mark II doesn't have it. I expected the other two cameras to not have it. The Rebel SL2 and the G7X Mark II was, it has USB-C. It actually has a lot of different ports. It does have a headphone jack, which is actually very nice. It's actually um, gonna go ahead and be on the side here. Tell me down below, how many of you guys actually use straps on your camera? Like, do you actually use the straps on your camera or do you not? I personally sometimes do uh, for most of mine, but I don't know, kind of maybe getting away from that. It also does have a headphone jack, which is actually very nice. That does let you go ahead and listen back to the audio you are going ahead and recording as you are going. It has a micro HDMI port, which I know a lot of people hate, um, but it does have USB-C. And that is to charge it and it's also to transfer files over to your computer. Very nice. Very, very nice. Definitely a great feature of this is USB-C. Everything nowadays, I mean, how many times are you going to be in a camel bag and be like, you know, I got my micro USB cable. That's all I need in my life. No, you're never going to say that. Nothing uses micro USB anymore. If you have an iPhone, you're using a lightning port. If you have an Android, you're using USB-C. You're not using a micro USB or the other like micro, I want to call it USB, but it's like a micro USB, both of them. You know what I'm talking about, the little square part. It's actually what goes for this camera right here, the 6D Mark II. Yeah. You're not using it. I I'm sorry. If you are, the door is back there. Just see yourself out. Nonetheless, though, another great feature about this and something that this has a that camera right there does not have. And a lot of cameras don't have. I I'm not trying to pick on this camera. It's a beautiful camera, but it doesn't have the feature. Is it has certain buttons you can program when you're shooting video or photo that lets you be able to shortcut and select certain things. For example, we have C1, C2, C3, and C4, which honestly, I just love. It lets you be able to have certain shortcuts ready to go at any given time. So if you're shooting a video, let's say for example, and you're like, hey, I had to zoom in, which you can zoom in on this camera, not even if you don't have a zoom lens, you can zoom in, which is very awesome. And you're like, hey, I need to zoom in real fast. You can zoom in without having to go to settings, go to the menu, go to zoom, and be like, okay, let me see what I got here. It's so awesome. You can just set that to like C3, for example, and instantly you are perfect. I love that so much. I definitely, it is a feature that I just love more than anything, is the ability to set custom things all ready to go without having as you she knew right here what's up guys how you doing um nonetheless though it's just a awesome feature to have automatically built into, into the camera and that's something that my canon 6d mark ii does not have uh so i definitely love the fact it does have that again i talked about you can use adapters for this camera so again you can use a meta bones my personal opinion is you are going to go ahead and get an adapter get a meta bones i know i know you're saying it's $400. I get that. It's expensive. I own one. But at the same time, if you get a cheaper adapter like I did, I have a video on my channel talking about it, is that it's going to fluff you over in the end. The reason why is because, of course, it does... It, the autofocus sucks on it, okay? You're adding, you're adding like a $2,000 camera with a 
$5 paper bag and you're trying to get good results. It's not going to happen. So, even with the Metabones, Metabones isn't the end-all, be-all, amazing, you know, like, adapter you add to your camera and you just have this beautiful sight going on. But it's going to do a lot better than if you use a $100 one. And if you use a Sigma, because Sigma is not bad, okay? Sigma is actually a pretty good adapter. It w it's made to work with Sigma lenses, not Canon lenses. So if you're getting it to put it on a Canon body, or, sorry, or a Canon lens on a Sony body, it's gonna work, it's gonna do the job, but it's not made for that. You have to keep that in mind. It's not created to have a Sony to a Canon. It's made for a Sony to a Sigma lens. So it's not gonna do as amazing. Um, it's, let me go ahead and just talk about a couple more things we have real fast. The battery is actually amazing. So this battery, um, is compared to the A7S Mark II, it is double the size of that battery. And I don't mean like physically the size of holding it. I'm talking about the battery life. Battery life is times two of the A7S II, which in my opinion is amazing because you get double the time. It's not as great in low life as it is in the A7S uh, II, but it's still amazing. It's definitely, um, it's still a great low light camera. Uh, right here, the ISO for this camera does go up to, let's see, 204,800, which is a freaking amazing. Uh, compare that to the 6D Mark II right here, the Canon, it, that is a, this is about 25,000 ISO. So this is 208,000. The difference is real. The low light of this camera is amazing. And right now, I'm actually shooting this on my Canon in low light. I don't know if you can tell, I've got a bright light right here, but it is kind of a low light scenario. And it's still, my Canon is still doing good, but in this camera, 100 times better. Um, with that in mind, guys, that is pretty much it, except for one more thing. And I'm telling you, this is important. This is why I'm gonna finalize the video off on because of the fact of how good this exact uh, quality of this camera is. And this is something I wish I had with the 6D Mark II because it saves you a crap ton of money. And I'm not kidding, this is a money changer play. Built in image stabilization. Now, I'm, you might be like, if you don't know cameras, you know anything about cameras, you're like, who cares? What's that mean? What that means, guys, is that you do not have to buy an IS lens. If you are using Sony, an OSS lens. It is just so freaking nice. I mean, again, I can't, <laughs> I'm not trying to overdo this last one, but it really is amazing because I have six, I have a Canon 6D Mark II with lenses. And for example, a 6D Mark, or not a 6D, a Canon 70 to 200 millimeter IS lens even if you look at f4 without is is 500 dollars with is is about almost i'm kind of hesitating because the price does go up and down but it's like around 900 dollars. it's like an extra 400 dollars to get is on the lens now this msi was in body in stabilization is not the greatest of all time it's not like if you had it on the lens if you had this with a oss lens combined together it's going to give you a hundred times better okay it's gonna really improve you to the next level but if you have a lens that isn't oss i hope i'm saying that right not o o yeah i think it's oss not oos correct me if i'm wrong nonetheless though what it does give you is the ability to be able to have a non my stabilization lens and still be able to do a pretty effective job. And that is why it's so amazing. That's why I personally am making this such a big deal right now and you're looking at me like, it's not that big of a deal, bro. It's really not. It actually is because that saves you a crap ton of money. When you start breaking down the money you're spending on IS versus non-IS lenses, image stabilization, again, for my Canon friends, my Canon viewers, for my Sony viewers, it's completely different. It's a OSS. Nonetheless, though, same exact thing. It's amazing. So with that in mind, guys, if you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit the like and subscribe button. Also, guys, if you love Canon, if you love Sony, tell me down below, which brand do you personally rock? And if you rock Panasonic, comment down below and say, got you, man.
See you guys next one. Peace out.